thanks to everyone for coming. Um, I particularly want to thank uh, the Labor Center for pulling this whole thing together. And uh, This is a, a dream event for me because of my uh, two passions for sports and labor. So this is blending the two and I'm, I'm thrilled to be here and I'm thrilled to be on stage with these two giants and have a chance to uh, moderate uh, this panel. Um, I think what we'll find after we talk and hear from Professor Gould and Scott Fujita is that the issues that underlie this lockout and this dispute between the NFL and the NFLPA, the Players Association, are similar issues that fundamentally underlie all disputes between labor and capital. And I think uh, before we dive into the world of uh, pro sports, or at least pro football, it'd be helpful to just take a look at the context in this country for this dispute in terms of the state of labor and the state of organized labor. People in the room probably know, certainly, that in the 50s, labor was at its uh, apex in terms of the percent of workers in this country that were organized into unions. 35% of workers in this country in 1955 were in labor unions. And those were all private sector workers. Fast forward to today, 2011, the number, I think, and Ken will correct me if I'm wrong because this is his game, is a little below 7% in the private sector. And those are the important numbers we're looking at here. Uh, private sector, 1955, 35%. Fast forward 2011, uh, under 7%. Now there's one number in that time frame that grew. And that was the number of employees who were organized in the public sector. Public sector employees started to get the right to organize in the 60s. And of course, one of the first states that gave their public employees the right to organize was Wisconsin much in the news of late. <laughs> and so here we are in 2011 with attacks on the right of public sector employees to collectively bargain with their employer. And that's what you saw played out in Madison and continues to be played out all throughout Wisconsin, is an attack on unionism, on collective bargaining. And what they've attempted to do there people like Scott Walker, funded by the Koch brothers. They've attempted to set up a situation where, because public sector employees have achieved a modicum of job security, decent pensions with defined benefits, and good health care, they've attempted to divide and conquer by creating a situation where private sector workers who have seen unionization dive, density dive in the private sector, the loss of defined benefit plans, the loss of health care, attempting to turn those private sector employees against their public sector sister and brethren. And that was really the message in Wisconsin. Well, as we saw, if we watched all the cable news shows, that message didn't fly. And in fact, public polling and, and uh, unions, private sector unions came out full force in support of those public sector employees in Wisconsin and laid siege to the Capitol for many, many weeks. The Green Bay Packers, players who had just won the Super Bowl, stepped out very forcefully in support of their right to collective bargaining. And in fact, the one employer, major private employer in the state that stepped out and you can't even really call it a private employer because, in fact, the team is municipally owned. The Green Bay Packers, as a team and as a franchise, came out with a public statement in support of collective bargaining and supporting the public sector unions. That's because the team is owned by the people of Milwaukee. It's not owned by a billionaire businessman. So that's what we've seen in Wisconsin. Now, with respect to this dispute between the NFL and the NFLPA, we see some similar dynamics at work. If you go up to the, onto the blogosphere or read the dailies, they're sizzling with discussions about this lockout. And the rap is basically, oftentimes, a pox on both their houses. They're both to blame for this mess. In fact, here's the title of a blog by a columnist for a caper in Pittsburgh. It says, NFL and NFLPA, 
why would you possibly want to kill the golden goose? So here we are again uh, with a uh, concerted attempt by the, by the league and by a lot of the mass media to turn the public against the players. Now, it's certainly true, first of all, that these owners are billionaires and that many of the players are millionaires. And in fact, what they say constantly is, how can we get behind a bunch of players who have a minimum salary of 285000 a year and have four months off every year? Why should we care about them? What are their issues that are important to us? Well, I think in this discussion we're going to have here today, you'll see that there's some very basic issues around health care and health